Hi there guys, Mr. Martin here again. Thanks so, so much for joining me. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at the first in a long series of videos about the research process. Now the research unit in higher psychology is pretty much gonna be the first question in your exam paper. And it's also good to have a good understanding of the research process to enable you to fulfill, carry out and get a good mark on your research assignment and dissertation. So this one is worth really listening and paying attention to. This first video is gonna be a nice short one all about the scientific method and the research process. Now I don't have enough time in these videos to go into a full sort of description of the scientific method and all of its wonder. I remember I'm a scientist by heart and by training, so I love the scientific method. You have to look at other videos to give you a full description of it. I'm just gonna give you enough to really kind of whet your appetite and get you thinking about how science is done. So let's begin and dive straight in. What is the scientific method? I want you just now, just to shut your eyes, maybe not, doesn't really matter, and I want you to picture a scientist. Now, if we refer back to an earlier video, what you're picturing just now is everybody's schema of a scientist. Guaranteed that person is wearing a white coat. They're probably standing in the laboratory, surrounded by beakers, all of which are bubbling with some mysterious elixirs. That person looks probably like Albert Einstein, lots of crazy gray hair all over the place, some kind of weird mad scientist kind of person. That's not really what science is, though science is, I like to think of it, kind of like a machine. It's a knowledge generating machine. It's a way of looking at the universe and never really being truly happy with it. The scientific method is a cyclical process. It's all about generating ideas. Once we've got an idea, then we conduct some research. That research will allow us to analyze the findings of the research, and we use those findings to generate some more ideas. And then the whole process starts again. You can see it's a cycle. Now the eventual goal of all science is to build a theory. Now the word theory here is a bit of a difficult one. We tend to think of the word theory as being a guess, a kind of best guess about something. That's not re what really what it means in science. A theory in science, we think about the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the theory of germs. The best way for me to explain this to you is that it is an explanation of how and why processes occur, which is supported by all the evidence we have currently. Now, if you're very, very good at science, you can get those theories named after you. They'll talk about the Darwinian theory of evolution named after Charles Darwin, of course. But a theory is supported by current evidence, meaning that if new evidence comes along that doesn't support that theory, well, then we have to reject it and we start again. This is why science isn't arrogant. It's a very open and honest method. We use it to build knowledge. And as soon as we have new knowledge, then we update and we generate new knowledge based around that. Really quite lovely if you think about it. Or at least I think it is. Here's the research process here. This is the cycle that all scientists, especially psychologists, must follow to generate new ideas and to act on them. The first thing that we do is we identify our research hypothesis. Basically what we want to do here is we make a prediction about what we'll find in a particular situation. I predict that this is how people will act in this situation. The next thing we do is we design a study. We've got our question, we've got our expectation about how people or things might react in a particular way. Well, we're gonna build our study. Is it best to do an experiment? Do we do a non-experimental method? Do we do a survey, a questionnaire, an interview? There are lots of options available to us, but basically we design a study to allow us to investigate that research hypothesis. Next, we carry out our research. Now, this generally involves lots of different subjects, participants, people that we have either paid or otherwise volunteered themselves to do our study. Once they have carried out that research, then we analyze our results compare them at this point to the hypothesis. Are they what we expect? Now the thing about this is that even if we were right or if we were wrong, what we do now is we publish those results. If we have invented something entirely brand new, wow, well, you're gonna be in the front page of psychology journals around the world. If you have confirmed pre-existing knowledge, then you have added to the pool of research that we already have. If you have something that didn't quite go according to plan, well then that's still a good result. 
All science, all findings are good findings under the eye of the research process. Once we published our results, we put them into context. We look at them in terms of all the other knowledge that currently exists about that research hypothesis. And then from our knowledge and everybody else's as well, then we identify a new research hypothesis based on our findings and everybody else's. And then we design a new study to test that hypothesis and so on and so on and so on. This is a cyclical process and it never ever ends. What's the end goal of science then? When do we know to stop? When can we stop generating new hypotheses? When does the process end? The answer is, well, if we're doing it properly, then it will never end. It does not have an end. The whole point of the scientific method and this research cycle leads us to progressively better understanding of topics. But here's the key thing, here's the rub. We will never ever in a million years have a perfect understanding of a particular topic. Now, part of this is because of the way that experiments work. Experiments don't really prove things to be true. We kind of prove things not to be true. But the thing about experiments is we can never prove a theory to be entirely true. It's a bit strange to kind of think about, you have to believe me for this one, but it's the philosophy of experiments. Once we have a look at experiments later on, you'll understand that a little bit more. Science isn't arrogant. We never claim to have all the answers. All we have is a good understanding of a topic, but we will never have a perfect understanding, only a progressively better understanding. What we've got just now when we talk about theories of attachment, theories of memory, theories of sleep and dreams, they are just now, by definition, our best explanations. But they're all open to reconsideration. If a new piece of evidence was to come up tomorrow, someone's been researching in the lab, that completely blows apart our current ideas about memory theories or sleep theories, well then scientists around the world will rejoice because that means they have to go back to the drawing board. The scientific process is not about getting answers to the universe. It is about exploring it and glorying in its wonder. I sound a bit like a philosopher here, don't I? You can tell I'm a bit of a scientist. In summary, psychology based on the scientific method and research and the subject goes through this series of stages. Now, these stages form a cycle, theories gradually being improved over time. A theory represents the best available explanation of a psychological process. But there's always room for improvement. That's the key thing about this. And any idea in science is always open to evidence-based criticism. In our next videos, we'll be looking at how psychology really fits together in terms of how we do experiments and how we conduct non-experimental methods. But up until this point, guys, I hope I've whetted your appetite to learn more about the scientific method and the research process in psychology. Thanks very much for listening, guys. Nice short video today. In our next video, we'll be looking at experimental methods. But until then, hope you've had a good time and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.